Welcome to this month's Flying Razorback Report. I'm Tech Sergeant Chauncey Reed. In this month's edition, the Director of the Air National Guard and the Command Chief Master Sergeant of the Air National Guard visit the 188th and much more. But first, a message from FSS. Hello, I am Chief Master Sergeant Magda Hamlin, Superintendent of the 188th Force Support Squadron. And I'm here to discuss a few common factors that make airmen ineligible for promotion. One, not being the sole accumbent of a unit vacancy or position. What this means is that you cannot be double slotted in a position. Two, not being fully qualified in your previous AFSC, which means making sure that you get your seventh skill level before you change career fields, which can greatly benefit you. Three, not meeting time and grade and time and service requirements. Four, not having a decoration in the past four years. Joint Force Headquarters requires this before you can be promoted. Five, does not meet the minimum promotion retainability requirements. You must have enough time left in your enlistment contract to qualify. Six, you must have a passing fitness score. Last but not least, a College of the Air Force degree is required to make Senior in Chief. So if you want to make Senior in Chief, you need to start working on that CCAF now. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more information from FSS in the future. Financial security, we all want it for us and our family. Changes to the military's retirement system could have a big impact on the way you invest in your future. service members that have less than 12 years of service as of the 31st of December of 2017 will have an option to either opt in to the new blended retirement system or they can continue under their current system that they have. For those that are in prior to that 12 years and have been serving for several years like myself for 29 years, I stay under the current system. Those service members that enter the service after January 1st of 2018 will all be under the new blended retirement system. The big difference is that you'll now have an automatic Department of Defense contribution to your thrift savings plan of 1%. So that's a change compared to the TSP program and under this new retirement system. The other great thing about that is, is which we've never had, is matching funds for our service members. So a service member can put in 5% and the government will match or the Department of Defense will match up to 4% for that service member. So this is a huge change for us. Right now, currently, 81% we estimate of uh, service members that join, if they don't serve their full 20 years, walk away with nothing. Under blended retirement, that same service member can walk away with a retirement benefit after just two years. Those service members that serve to 20 years on active duty will collect their retirement at annuity of 2% versus the current 2.5% after 20 years of credible service. And for our reserve component service members, the same rules will apply that currently exist today. After 20 years of credible service and at age 60, they'll collect their annuity or retirement check at a 2.0% versus the current 2.5%. We're keeping up with looking at what the force of the future will look like for the Department of Defense. And part of that is we need to keep up with our civilian counterparts out there, be ensure as leadership. We answer every question for them. We educate them on the choices. But there again, we're there to support them and their family members, and we try to guide them in the best direction. But again, at the end of the day, it's gonna be their personal decision to make. The 2018 Blended Retirement System, financial security for you and your family. The 188th Wing regularly offers tours for local grade school students. It's a great opportunity to educate them on the Air National Guard and what the 188th Wing does. Senior Airman Cody Martin has the story. The ladder pops out and you climb up the ladder to get in. Students from the Van Buren School District visited the 188th Wing to learn about career opportunities in the Air National Guard. The youth were shown statics of our previous mission aircraft 
and learn the roles of the 188th's security forces and civil engineers. Reporting from Ebbing Air National Guard Base, I'm Senior Airman Cody Martin. Over 30 years ago, Brigadier General Hutchins Fry started her career by enlisting in the 188th Wing. We recently had a chance to talk to her about being a leader and her upcoming assignment at NGB. I wake up every day to be happy. Happiness is a personal choice and I choose to be happy. It's contagious for the most part. So uh, in June, I'm going to be the director uh, for the National Guard Bureau for the A1, which is personnel and manpower and services recruiting and retention. So that's been my dream job since I was a lieutenant colonel here. But I'm so excited to continue to serve. Once I got into the Guard, I went to basic in 1985 in tech school. Uh, I just love the people. What I found in the uh, Air Guard is that if you set goals and you worked hard, you took care of people, that really the sky was the limit. Uh, being a good leader is taking care of your folks, making sure they have the tools to be successful. Uh, and sometimes they're not, and when they're not, you've got to tell them. Treat people like you want to be treated. Build relationships and partnerships, because when things are going great, it's great. But when things go south, you need, you need to pull on them to help you get through things. I had some great mentors, too, that really helped me out. And now, Chaplain Tom Smith with the importance of time. Time is something that we all have. Sometimes we try to save it. Sometimes we just squander it. But the fact remains is time is something that we all have regardless of whether it's the same length of time for every one of us. Did you know that uh, the average person, if his heart rate is beating 60 times a minute, that uh, in uh, one day will have beat, beaten over 86,000 times? If you live 70 years at 60 beats a minute, then you will have, uh, uh, your heart will have beaten uh, about uh, 2.1 billion times, and if you live 80 years, it's uh, beat about 2.5 billion times. So what are you doing with your time? I hope that you're using it wisely, investing it in other people's lives and in eternity. Because when it's gone, it's gone. God bless you. During a recent visit by the Director of the Air National Guard, the 188th Wing had the opportunity to demonstrate its unique capabilities and innovative methods. As multiple Air National Guard locations face a transitional period, moving from manned aircraft to remotely piloted aircraft, intelligence and cyber missions, airmen are continuously challenged to become the 21st Century Guard. There's a lot of moving parts in what our 21st Century Airmen are asked to do and what we train them to do. Very complex. The 188th Wing takes on this task with a versatile training environment, ideal for the joint fighter readiness, allowing airmen to train the way they fight. I see this as a center of some very innovative things uh, we're doing. And, and that's the strength of the 188, that they're able to evolve, change, and take on this new mission uh, very boldly, very aggressively, and be really good at it. The 188th is the innovation destination. The airmen and leaders embody this vision by continually striving to improve operational success across the Air National Guard. General Rice and I talk about this idea of the 21st Century Guard Airmen being a resilient airman, somebody who's innovative to meet the challenges of tomorrow, somebody that's willing to, to look at a problem differently than we've done in the past. Leadership puts the right template in place, but it's the airmen that make it happen, and this is the template for the future of our Air National Guard. This is what we talk about the 21st Century Guard Airmen. It is right here in Arkansas. And now it's time for this month's Spotlight. My name is Staff Sergeant James Mullins. I've been a member of the 188 uh, five years. I work in client systems. In client systems, we do everything from setting up profile accounts to hardware related fixes for desktops and laptops. We also do a lot of hardware fixes. So if there's something wrong with the computer, we take it apart, change it out, and put it back together. What I like best about being here is just the people you work with. It's a diverse group of people. The job is always changing. It's never the same thing every day. My hobbies include mountain biking. I like to work on cars and taking my dog to the dog park. It's one of the things I like to do to relax. My dog just uh, became officially registered as a therapy dog. He travels the Van Buren School District to aid kids. I'm happy to be a member of the 188th Wing. Now for interesting stories from outside the 188th Wing, it's your look around the Air Force. The Air Force Academy's falconry team performs for nearly 600,000 spectators a year 
at sporting events and educational visits nationwide. The Academy selected the Falcon as its mascot in 1955 for its superiority in the air. U.S. Air Force pararescue men and combat controllers conduct an exercise at Grand Barra, Djibouti. During the exercise, the airmen parachuted from a C-130J, set up an austere runway, and called in the C-130 for landing. Ready to launch. The WGS-9 satellite launched from Los Angeles Air Force Base in California and demonstrated the Air Force's continued commitment to deliver secure, and reliable satellite communications around the globe. The launch provides increased communication capacity and coverage. I'm Senior Airman Cody Martin, and that is your look around the Air Force. What a great way to celebrate the Air Force's 70th birthday. That's all for this month's Flying Razorback Report. Don't forget to follow us on social media to stay informed throughout the month. I'm Tech Sergeant Chauncey Reed. <laughs>